Welcome to today's class. So, we will be continuing with high resolution NMR spectrum of molecules. Okay, so, let us now using this concept of coupling constant and chemical shift, can we start interpreting NMR spectrum of few molecules and these can be used for distinguishing say isomers. So, let us take an example. So, if I have suppose a molecule which is something like C11, C11, H16 and O, this is a molecule which has two isomer. Now, isomer suppose is something like this CH3, CH3, CH3 and O, CH2, C6, H5 and the other molecule suppose we have CH3, O, CH3, CH3, C6, H4, CH3. So, if these two are isomer of the same molecule, how we can distinguish based on the NMR spectrum uh, that which molecule belongs to what. So, what will be the NMR spectrum for say first molecule? So, let us look at the uh, groups that are present closely here. We have a benzene ring. Now, as you know, benzene ring comes around say 7 ppm. Then we have three methyl groups, and these methyl groups comes quite like uphill shifted. Um, that that is like a near 0 ppm, and then we have a methylene group. So three types of carbon mostly we have. One here of benzene ring, methylene group and methyl group. So, 3 carbon type. So, we essentially we should see, see 3 peaks. What are those 3 peaks? And these 3 peaks are essentially like this. So, here say our 0 ppm reference is there. Now, we have the equivalent 9 protons that are contributed by these 3 methyl groups. So, we have a peak which will be like this methyl groups here and that will um, corresponds to 9 peaks. Then we have another proton which is methylene group. So, this is say 0 0.09 ppm. Then we have another group which is methylene group and here it is contributed by 2 protons. So, that will be around 3.5 ppm. And then we have far down here around 7 ppm that is one peak which is given by the 5 protons and that is 7.2. So, this is our spectrum for this molecule. Now, what happens to here this molecule which which is there is a uh, benzene ring one methyl group here, two methyl groups are here and one methyl groups are here. If you look at among these methyl groups the chemical shift is not same it is going to be different. Therefore, we have a different spectrum for this this molecule and this molecule will give a spectrum something like this. So, the most downfield shifted will be these two methyls and that will be slightly downfield than this 0.9. So, here is our TMS. So, these 6 protons will be around 1.2 ppm. So, this is 6. Then it comes like uh, other protons which we have like here and here. So, even in these methylene protons we have three kind of chemical shift for this benzene ring it will around 7.2 ppm, then methyl will be around 2.2 ppm this methyl and then we have 1.2 ppm and there is one more methyl which comes around here that is 3.5 ppm. So, we have a 6 protons that will be around 1.2 2 ppm, then 3 protons, 3 protons and this will be 4 protons. So, let us go to next page and then I will write it clearly. For molecule like this that we have, here is 0 ppm, we have the most downfield are 6 protons coming from these two groups uh, if you look at CH3 group and CH3 group. Now, then we have one CH3 group which is attached to benzene ring and that comes around 2 say 
2 ppm and this corresponds to 3 peaks. Then comes so this is what we are talking about this CH3 which is attached to benzene ring. Then we have 3.5 ppm CH3 corresponds to 3 proton and that we are talking about OCH3 group. So, even in the methyl depending upon what is attached here, we are getting that different chemical shift and most downfield shifted for 4 protons that is coming because of benzene ring. So, benzene ring has 4 protons because 2 groups are attached at 2 position. So, that is around 7.2 ppm that is how we can distinguish. So, if you go back, so spectrum of the previous proton here we have different than the current one and that is how you can distinguish between uh, two isomers. Let us take the another isomer, say its chemical formula is C7H12 and two structures that we have is CH3, 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 C triple bond CH3, one is this and suppose we have another CH3, 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 CH2, C triple bond CH. Okay. So, if we look at here, now what we have is all these are in the same chemical environment, so 9 proton and they will be quite up here shifted near 0. So, we have a 9 proton corresponds to these 3 moiety and we have here 0 0.9 ppm. Then we have another type of chemical shift which is coming from proton chemical shift which is coming from here and that is we have uh, one type of proton. So, that is 3 and this comes around 2. So, if you take ratio 3 to 9 or 1 to 3. So, here we have ratio of signal 3 to 9 or 1 to 3. For this molecule what we have here, we have a different kind of proton. So, here are 3 one kind of proton, then CH2 we have another kind and then CH we have that is third kind of protons. So, this CH3 again say all 9 will come at 0.9 ppm, then we have another proton, 2 protons which will come around 3 ppm and this one proton which will again come very closer to that. So, we have 2 protons and 1 proton that, that will come very close to each other. This is methylene proton and these are methylene protons. So, that comes quite um, downfield compared to this methyl protons. So, this is how you can distinguish the isomers. So, now how, how like we can do the analysis just I will go forward and try to explain again. So, first thing you need to know if you have a chemical formula how many kind of protons we can have. So, that will be simple given by how many double bonds that we have. So, there is a simple calculation which is called double bond equivalence that you can find it out by a simple formula called 2A plus 2 minus B divided by 2. For a compound which is like C A H B O C H B O C. So, here A is the number of carbon, B is the number of proton. So, like whatever we had earlier, if you look at C11, H16, O we have. So, how many double bond we are expected to have here? So, if you look at here, 2A, 22 plus 2 minus 16 divided by 2. So, 24 minus 16, 8 divided by 2 means 4 and therefore, we had a 1 benzene ring there. Okay. Now, that is how this can be used. Let us take the another example that we had in the previous um, example C7H12. How many double bond we are going to expect here? So, 7 into 2, 14, right? 14 plus 2 minus 12 divided by 2. So, that is 16 minus so that will be 2 number of double bonds. So, dBE is 2 and therefore, we had 1 triple bond there. So, in the previous example. So, that is how we can calculate the number of uh, double bond equivalent. So, now 
let us see I, if I give you uh, chemical formula and now we have to predict the spectrum for that. So, let us see we have a molecule like Ce2H4 and Cl2. Now, if you calculate using that then we do not have a double bond because 2 multiplied into 2 plus 2 minus 4 divided by 2. So, 4 plus uh, 2 6 minus 4 that is 2 divided by 2. So, dBe is like 1. So, we do not have any double bond here right. So, so that means all carbon are saturated. So, probably the structure for this can be something like this CH Cl HCl and Cl or it even can be like this CH3, CH3, CH, sorry CH and CH, Cl and Cl. So, how do you distinguish whether the spectrum that we are getting belongs to here or not? Now, we record the spectrum for this molecule and suppose we are just getting only one peak here is our TMS this is only one peak. So, now only one type of proton we have. So, only one type of proton can be only this. So, like where two protons on each carbon are attached and two chlorines are attached. If we have this case then we have two different kind of protons and this will generate two peaks. So, if you are getting only one peak that means this is the correct molecule that is how we actually interpret the J spectrum. Now, I will give you an a spectrum and a chemical formula and then we have to find uh, find what could be the structure of that. So, let us see if I have a chemical formula of a molecule which is C 9 H 12 and the spectrum that I am getting is something like here 0 and 1 peak here, 1 peak here ratio is 1 to 3. Now, to find it out what could be. So, you can similarly calculate the double bond equivalent and then two things are visible if I give you chemical shift. So, chemical shift suppose for this is around so less than 2 ppm say 1.5 something like that and here we are giving you around 7 ppm. So, it is now clearly evident that we have two kind of proton one belongs to say methyl group another belongs to and benzene ring. Now, so and ratios are 3 to 1. Now, we have a total of 9 carbon and 12 protons. So, 9 carbons and 12 proton if you calculate your double bond equivalent we can find it out that these 3 protons can only come if we have a methyl groups attached to a benzene ring and those methyl groups seems to be equivalent chemically equivalent therefore, something like this here one group attach another group here attach here and here. So, that takes care of our 9 protons remaining 3 protons are these and therefore, we have 2 kinds of proton one attached to the like directly from the benzene ring and 9 protons attached to the methyl group that is why we have 1 to, to 3 ok. Let us take another example. Now, here suppose our chemical formula is say C 4 H 10 O 2 and our spectrum is say something may be like this. Here we have a 6 integration here we have a 4 integration and this say chemical shift is 3.2 and this chemical shift is say 3.6 something like this very close. Now, can we predict the uh, chemical structure of this compound ok. So, we have a 0 uh, double bound. So, one can calculate it. Now, one thing is obvious that even there is a methyl group it is quite downfield compared to the typical methyl group and that is because two oxygens are attached. And we have two only two kind of protons one looks like from methyl group another looks like from methylene group. Let us put two oxygen here and then we have two methyls attached to these. So, let us attach those two methyls and then we have remaining two carbons and then we can balance the four protons. So, now these all four protons are of equivalent chemical shift and that belongs to these and this and these two methyl groups belongs to these. So, we have two kind of proton 
one contribute to six integration, another belongs to four integration. This is from methyl group, this is from methylene group. That is how we can solve this structure of few of the chemical compound. Rest you can practice and then we can discuss in the class if required, if you have any doubt. Okay. So, let us move back and let us try to do some of the uh, splitting pattern. So, what happens when J coupling is involved here we have not considered any splitting. So, let us consider some of the splitting. Now, suppose we have a molecule which has a chemical formula like C 3 H 7 and C L and we have a spectrum something like this here is our 0 ppm. We have two close peaks and integration of these together comes 6 and here we have a peak which looks like multiplet and here we have integration 1. So, C 3 H 7 C L what this could be? So, one thing is obvious that we have two kind of proton 6 and 1. So, here we have 7 so 6 and 1 very clear. So, then probably we have 6 protons so that might be coming from 2 methyl group. So, here let us put 2 methyl groups and there is a 1 chlorine. So, let us attach that chlorine here sorry C L here. Now, then there is only 1 proton which is attached here. Now, what is happening here? This proton is splitting this methyl group into 2 and therefore, we have 2 equivalent like height methyl protons and integration total is 6. Now, these 6 protons are splitting these uh, single proton into septate and that is why we have a multiplet and that comes to be 1. That is how you can find it out that this is the chemical structure given the chemical formula is this. Let us go to next example. Suppose we have a chemical formula like C 6 H 5 C H 2 S H. Okay. So, now the spectrum is something like this here is 0 ppm here we have a triplet of 1 here we have again 2 and here around 7 ppm. So, here is 7 ppm we have a 5 protons here 2 protons which is less than 4 so 3.8 ppm and this is say 1.8 ppm something like this. So, now we have to find the structure for this. Okay. If we have this compound so we can clearly identify that these peaks 5 protons coming from, from this one uh, C6H5 and then so this triplet uh, this, this, this is CH2 so that will split SH proton into triplet therefore we have one SH triplet at one and then this H will split this CH2 into doublet. So, we have here doublet structure. So, that is how looking at the spectrum and looking at the chemical structure one can identify few of these compounds. Okay, Let us take an complicated one. Now, you can maybe you try to do it by yourself. If we have something like C5, H9, O4 and N and suppose a spectrum I am getting something like this. So, here we have two kind of protons that shows doublet and here we shows triplet and this is say 1 ppm and this is say 1.4 ppm, this is 1.6 ppm. Integration of this is 3 or integration of this is 3 and then we have one around 4.2 ppm and here we have a quartet like this and then around say 5.2 ppm we have again a quartet something like this. So, integration of this is 1, 2 and here we have a 3 and 3. Now, can you identify what this compound can be given the formula is like this. Okay. So, let us try to solve this as well. So, we have 2, 3, 3 protons that, that looks like there will be 2 methyl groups. So, looking at these there is no chemical equivalent. So, there will be 2 methyl groups we can write it 2 methyl groups at 2 end and then we have 2 other protons which are equivalent to so like CH2 and here CH. Now, we have we can have 1 NO2 
and there will be some CO2 which will be entrapped here. So, CO2, so our compound something like this we should have a, so get down the exact chemical formula I am giving you hint, we have 2 methyl group, there will be 1 CH2 group, 1 CH group that will correspond to the spectrum that we just now draw it. Here we have a triplet corresponding to 3 protons, here we have another triplet corresponding to 3 protons, here we have a quartet corresponding to 2 proton and here we have again quartet corresponding to 1 proton, 5.2, 4.5, 1.8 and 1.6. So, identify how these molecules correspond to this kind of a spectrum and I will suggest you guys to do practice, uh, take any organic chemistry NMR spectroscopy book, practice it, take the spectrum and then try to deduce the chemical structure of that or take a compound and try to draw the uh, spectrum for that. But to understand how these lines comes, we have to go into little rigorous details of explanation for their intensity, for their resonance frequency, all those comes if you understand little bit of quantum mechanical analysis. So, what I will do today for this explanation, I briefly venture into quantum mechanical description of, of, of these spins. So, I will just like you to um, uh, go through the basics of quantum mechanics, but we will be wherever required, we will introduce it some of the phenomena. So, I will start with a basic principle of quantum mechanics. So, as you have studied your in your undergraduate or so, for basic principle of quantum mechanics, we have an operator which operates on a um, on a eigen function. So, we have an operator and we need to define an Hamiltonian function and operator operates on eigen function and it gives its eigen value. So, these are basic terms like operator, Hamiltonian, eigen values and eigen function. In NMR, we particularly are interested in something called angular momentum operator and uh, this is defined as I. So, angular momentum uh, is of our particular interest and we define that in I. I is an operator it's of total angular momentum, I has a 3 direction x, y, g and so here I z direction or x direction and say y direction or vice versa. So, it has 3 component, one in z direction, x direction, y direction in all 3 direction. So, for a single spin half system, two orientation of spin are possible, one is like along the magnetic field, here suppose we have a magnetic field B0, one is along the magnetic field, another is against the magnetic field. You can define one as alpha, another as a beta or vice versa, whatever way you want to define. So, these are the um, two orientation of spins along the magnetic field or against the magnetic field. So, now these are eigen function of IZ operator. As I said, there is an operator and in NMR it is angular momentum operator. So, now IZ is an operator and it is operating on the eigen function. Uh, like uh, alpha and beta. So, if Ij operating on alpha state, it gives the value of plus half or if it operates on beta state, it gives the value of if, uh, minus half. So, that is what we have. Okay. So, now if these functions alpha and beta are orthogonal, that means if you take the bracket notation alpha alpha or beta beta, it is 1 or if you take beta alpha, alpha beta it is 0. So, that is what uh, we mean by orthogonal function. Now, so as we said that um, these are operators I, Ix, Iy, Ij and these spins they do not commute but obey a cyclic relation. So, what we mean by cyclic relation in quantum mechanics that if you take this Ip or Iq they will give you IR. That means, if you take Ix or Iy in our angular momentum term, they will give Iz. So, now two commuting operator with non-degenerate Eigen value have a common Eigen function. What I mean by that? If you have a, a, B, phi, so we have these functions. So, here B is non-degenerate Eigen values, 
of function b. So, that means a phi must be an scalar multiplication of phi what we mean by this is a phi equal to small a phi. This means phi is an Eigen function of a and a is an Eigen value. So, here is phi is an Eigen function a is Eigen value. So, this is basics of quantum mechanics and as we said that we will come back to quantum mechanics we reintroduce wherever it is required. So, now let us move ahead and then look at the high resolution NMR spectrum. So, what all the functions and uh, Hamiltonian we have. So, main one is a Zeeman interaction. What we mean by Zeeman interaction is a interaction of spins with an external magnetic field. So, as we, we see that external magnetic field is defined as a B0 and it is in Z direction. And this is of like um, if you look at the magnitude it is quite a bit because magnetic field is of Tesla order or in terms of frequency it is a megahertz like 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz and all those. The next one is J coupling that is another Hamiltonian. So, J coupling is interaction between the spins through bond. So, like there are say here this is interaction between spin A and spin B and through bond how they are interacting that is what we call it J coupling. So, it is a intramolecular interaction and this is of relatively very small uh, magnitude. The third one is called dipolar coupling. So, two spins in solution. So, these are two spins and there is a bond vector between them. So, spin A and spin B and this is bond vector connecting them. So, the angle between the main magnetic field and this bond vector is given as a phi. Now, the dipolar coupling interaction happens through a space. So, uh, this was through bond interaction scalar coupling the dipolar coupling is through a space interaction and that if you remember little bit of this dipolar kind of interaction this is proportional to 3 cos square phi minus 1. So, phi is the angle between this intermolecular uh, vector of these two spins with the magnetic field. Now, what happens in solution the two spins all the time tumbles right. So, because of this tumbling this term goes to 0 and therefore, we do not see any dipolar coupling in solution. So, what we have mostly is a Zeeman interaction and J coupling interaction, dipolar coupling is averaged out in solution, but that is not case in the solid, solid spins does not tumble. So, if we want to make this term 0, we have to spin faster and faster and that is that we will discuss later whenever it comes. But in liquid state, so this is these are the two interaction terms that we have mostly coming from the magnetic field, external magnetic field this is order of megahertz, then we have J coupling which is in order of hertz and dipolar coupling is typically order of kilohertz. So, this is the main, main field and then we have a um, uh, J coupling. So, now let us move ahead if we have these interactions that means these can form the Hamiltonian which operates on the um, angular momentum operator. Okay. So, the isotropic nuclear spin Hamiltonian isotropic means spins that tumbles in solution. So, as we say isotropic that means uh, spinning is happening all the time it is randomly moving. So, dipolar coupling is not there we have a Zeeman interaction and an scalar coupling interaction which is coming because of J. So, total Hamiltonian is H0 and H1. Now, H0 is our Zeeman uh, term and, and H1 is essentially J coupling term. So, H0 one can define that how different spins like I, Z, I, I is different spins and J as we said the Z component of angular momentum, gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio of the each nuclei. So, we have to sum over the sum over all the nuclei how this term comes. So, H0 the Zeeman interaction term can be given by summation of gamma i, H i and Z i. Now, H1 is a J coupling Hamiltonian this causes the mixing of two spins uh, because two spins now talking to each other through bond. So, that is how it is J i this is the uh, this is coming because of the coupling and here are two spins i uh, i i and i j. So, i i and i j are operator of i and j spin and because of this we have a coupling constant 
j is a coupling constant ij dy is operator of for the z component of the angular momentum from i spin so these are the two hamiltonian terms in liquid states okay so now quantum mechanical term for spin half spin half that mostly we are looking at at the moment so spin half nuclei like proton or carbon 13 or phosphorus p31 or nitrogen uh, nitrogen 15 now in these states the half spin spin system can be either in alpha state or beta state alpha state or beta state and then uh, we can take the summation over all states so for a particular states say we have a n spins so we can write a particular state by alpha 1 that means the spin 1 is in alpha state, spin 2 is in beta state, spin 3 again is in alpha state, spin 4 is in beta state and again a spin 5 in alpha state. So multiplication of all those will be given by a particular function which is phi n. So phi n is our eigen function and Hamiltonian H0 that is Zeeman Hamiltonian um, operated on phi n which gives the Eigen value E n. So that is what H Hamiltonian gives uh, phi n is a Eigen function and E n is an Eigen value. So now the another Hamiltonian which is H1 and that is J coupling Hamiltonian this as we discussed cause the mixing of two different states. Now for these two Eigen function there will be linear combination of the product. So what we mean by that so if we have a, a spins like uh, n spins so we can have a product of these uh, spins and you have to sum over that and that gives you resultant Eigen function. So Eigen function will be determined by the solution of the secular equation you might have studied. So we can solve this equation where h m n minus e uh, delta m n will be 0 and you have to solve this the h m n is the matrix element of this uh, Hamiltonian. For solving this we have to define our operator which is f g and the product function which comes from the this j coupling Hamiltonian you can solve this by defining in f j and if you take this um, if we take this product so f j is Eigen function and I have Eigen values like total azimuthal quantum number so one can solve it by do, doing simple quantum mechanical algebraic operation and fz commutes with um, Hamiltonian H. So fz has a degenerate Eigen value and that have uh, uh, that the above communication does not imply that Eigen function fz will have a uh, Eigen function of H. So if we solve this equation you apply fz on phi m and then you get fm. So fn and fm are Eigen value corresponding to two function phi n and phi m and you solve this commutation relation and one can find it out. So like this operation so f m f n is not equal to f m and then the matrix uh, elements will vanish and that helps us actually solving these equations. So you can block diagonalize this matrix representation taking the case of f n not equal to f m. So if you do that then secular determinants gets the block di diagonalized and the problem of determining the Eigen value will be reduced in dimension and then each block can be treated separately for solving these, uh, these functions. So that is how we can solve it the Eigen function for each of these value can be solved and uh, if you can substitute then one can find the uh, multi by multiplying phi m and calculating the matrix element and one can do that then what we found the basic functions and finally we come to by solving this we come to such kind of coefficient. So now doing that we can calculate the Hamiltonian for two spins. So now the complex problem will be now simplified in two spin system and now next we move ahead and try to solve uh, and look at how we can calculate the Hamiltonian for two spin system and from there we build up the concepts and we try to, we will try to get it to the solution for uh, these spins. So today I would like to end up here just I will summarize that uh, we looked at how the splitting happens and what is the basic rule for splitting and where is the like, resultant chemical shift average comes 
what is what will be the rules for intensity of these terms. So, for a detailed analysis of these splitting patterns one has to go to quantum mechanical formalism and we looked at basics of quantum mechanics how to solve this. So, we will continue from there to calculate the Hamiltonian for two spin system and then we build up from there. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to see you in the next class.